Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Today we're going to take a look at Autodesk Inventor Professional and the process is involved in making part files. Now Autodesk Inventor uses a couple different types of files so we'll look at that by coming up to the new menu and when we get this dialog box we'll see that the default tab is open and you see some different file extensions. So you have a IPT file which stands for part and then once you have multiple part files you can create what is called an assembly or an IAM file. Once you have an assembly or part file you can also create standard drawings which come out on a, on a sheet and then once you have an assembly done you can also create presentations which look like a, a blow-up version of your assembly. So we'll just select for the time being a metric template and we'll come down to standard millimeter part in the metric tab and we'll click OK and you'll notice how the ribbon changes these are the different tools that we have to create parts so lots of good stuff in here so first thing we'll do is we'll create a sketch so to create a sketch we come to the sketch button and it asks us to select a plane and you'll know any time that you need to do something next there will be a prompt on your bottom left so it's saying select plane to create sketch so what I'm going to do is just come to the origin folder in the model browser and I'm just going to choose the YZ plane now you'll see the preview in the screen in the, the model window and when I use the view cube to navigate out I have now an isometric view open so I can start drawing geometry in here using some of the draw tools but what I actually want to do is get a 2D plane where I can look at this properly so I'm gonna navigate until I can locate that plane and now I'm looking directly on it so I use the view cube a lot. You can also use the shift key and hold down on your wheel mouse and that will allow you to rotate to arbitrary angles. But for the most part I keep it to the view cube which is a nice way of navigating. So this isn't actually what I want to create this shape. But as you can see in the draw menu you have some tools that are pretty typical for geometric drafting. So what I'm going to do is start with a circle and I'm going to hover over this point right here which is our origin. When you get to the origin you'll notice that you have the zero coordinates. So I'll left click and I'll start to create a circle. Now at any time I can type in the geometry and it creates that circle at 50 millimeters just the way I want it. I'll draw another circle as I already have it open and I'll type in 70 for this one. So now I have two concentric circles and I can use this to create a feature. So I'll say finish sketch for the time being and I'll use the extrude command to create a pipe. So with the profile button already depressed, when I hover over different profiles within the sketch, it gives me an option as to which one I want to extrude. I want to extrude the exterior circle and make a ring so I choose that profile and now you see that there's a, a dynamic arrow that you can use to specify the distance or you can actually type in a distance in a couple different locations in a dialog box or here by your cursor so I'll just type in 40 for the time being and I'm going to use the symmetric option so it extrudes from both sides of the plane I'll hit OK and now I have my feature so now that we've created the extrusion feature, you'll notice that our sketch is gone from the model browser. If I expand the extrusion feature, there you'll see the sketch. So if I want to reuse this sketch later, I can right click on the sketch, say share sketch, and another sketch appears above that feature. So now I can come in and edit this sketch by clicking on edit sketch by right clicking, or once I have this highlighted in the model browser I can come over here and use these buttons so I can create another extrusion I can create a revolve I can create a hole in the extrusion or I can edit my sketch so I'm going to choose to edit the sketch again and I'm going to come back to that plane 
and now I want to create a spoke so I'm going to come to the line command and I'll start anywhere on this circle and I'll bring it over here about that far no need to be exact right now now you'll notice that I have a yellow dot under my cursor if I bring that back to the end it turns gray if I click on the left mouse button and hold it it starts to create an arc so notice when I get 180 degrees over I get a dotted line to tell me and I can let go and begin another line so I'll bring this back and just make sure it's not symmetrical because I actually want to add a symmetric constraint afterwards so to create this symmetric constraint what I need to do is create a construction line this allows me to create a line that won't actually define the geometry I just use it as a reference within my sketch so now that I have this mode selected I come back to the line come to the center of my circle and I bring this all the way to this arc and now it's constrained to the arc so now I can choose another constraint called a coincident constraint and I'm going to bring the center point of this arc down to the construction line to add another constraint about that construction line I choose the symmetric constraint choose the two lines I want to be symmetric and then I select my construction line so you see the slight difference there now I want to add some dimensions to make this exact so the first dimension I'm going to add is a six millimeter dimension to the arc so I say 14 at first I just simply double click on the number put in six and it changes my arc I'll do that same thing from the center point to the edge of the arc oh. We'll give that a value of 66 for the time being. Now I want to add one more dimensional constraint, and that's a 20 degree angle. So we'll do that same practice of just clicking on the number afterwards. And now I have the feature configured the way I want to for the sketch. I'll say finish sketch. So now what I can do is create another extrusion simply using this profile. So I'll select that profile, I'll choose my symmetric option again, and this time I'll give it 12 millimeters. Now some of the great things about Inventor is that it lets you do a lot of work with one simple command. So if I want to create an array and have six of these spokes, I can simply select my feature, come to the circular pattern tool, and then I can choose an axis of rotation by simply selecting the inside now we're noticing that it's bisecting so maybe maybe I can accept that and we don't really want that bisecting to happen here so what we'll do is go back and change our sketch so I want to change this sketch so that this angle is more acute so I'm going to come in and I'm going to change that to 18 And you'll notice that the extrusion has slightly changed, but not quite enough. So, come back to that. We'll change that to 15 this time. And our extrusion isn't actually updating. So, come back, edit the extrusion by clicking on profile. Okay. And now if we turn it back on that flat plane, you can see that there's a space between our spokes. So one more thing to finish up this, we want to add some smoothness to these edges. So we'll come to the fillet command and we'll start selecting some edges. We can select any of these edges that highlight. And what I want to do is add a two millimeter fillet to all of these edges. 
And even though I can't see the geometry, it doesn't mean I can't add the fillet to it. So you'll see the highlight of the geometry underneath. And notice as you start adding the fillet, it starts to give you a preview of how it's all going to look when it's all said and done. So I'm just going to use my view cube to get a bit of a different view. Keep going. Selecting all these edges. And you'll notice that that dynamic arrow appears for the fillet as well. So if I wanted to, I could, I could change that fillet with the dynamics. And notice that these red markers show you that that fillet actually can't be attained. So, oh, that's not good. Now we just got rid of all our work. I'll come back and I'm going to quickly gather all of these by saying all fillets, put in two millimeters, say OK. So that does those fillets. And you can see how quickly this all takes place. And at any time, you can change these to, say, 3 or 4. Or you can, again, use a dynamic arrow. For these ones, I want them to actually be 2. So accept that. And I also want to add fillets to the original feature. So I'm going to select this, 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 and that one. And I'm going to make that 3 millimeters. So now you can see we've got a pretty simple carrier created. And that didn't take all that long. But at any time, if you want to see what happened, the evolution of your part, you can move your end of part feature up on the model tree. And it'll show you exactly what's, what's been happening since the beginning. You can also suppress certain features by right clicking and clicking on the suppress feature and you'll see that fillet went away. So now I simply come up to the application menu, save part, and I could call this Travis Carrier. Save that and that's a part. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time, we're going to take a look at creating drawings out of our part files and a little bit of a look into assemblies.